Greetings. Uh, so this video was created to explain the mathematics that I'm learning in your in, 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 fuck. Hey, so uh, this video was created to explain the mathematics that I'm learning and hopefully to give some useful insight into the world of mathematics. Please note that I am by no means a math genius. In fact, the level of mathematics that I'm learning as a software development student is nowhere near what the actual mathematicians learn, which is really fascinating stuff. And I might get some things wrong, so don't take anything I say here as gospel truth, you know, research it. Um, and of course, I welcome any corrections that you might have for me. So, in order to make a pie from scratch, you must first create the universe. Indeed, mathematics is the science studying a world that us humans created from scratch. So that it is literally where we're starting off from initially. Uh, it is important to note that because some mathematical concepts bear the same names as concepts that apply to the real world, so it is important to let go of all of our preconceived notions when we enter the world of mathematics, because again, we're literally starting off from scratch. So in the world of mathematics, all concepts and all objects have to be clearly defined, so everything in mathematics uh, is defined in such a way that no misunderstanding is possible. Uh, unfortunately, so we're going to need a language uh, for all this, and unfortunately our own human languages are not capable of this. So we're going to have to adapt a mathematical language to describe you know, the various objects that we're looking at. Uh, so I'd like to talk briefly about the subject of notation. In high school you might have learned something like, you know, A with a line above it means that A is some sort of vector. So, you know, A is equal to some sort of A and B, or in higher math, you would say it's equal to A, B, a vector like that. So, uh, in the university, you know, it's no longer the case. Um, uh, an A with a line above it could be anything, you know. This A could be anything, this B could be anything. In fact, you might notice that I used A here and here, but I also used it here. But that is not true. An A with a line above it is completely separate from A, you know, just like that, you know. And it's completely separate from an A that is, you know, a little hat on, or, you know, A with an index of N, or any of these things. They're all, these are all separate, you know. Uh, they might be related. They usually are. That's a good convention to have. But, um... They don't have to, so just because these are all, you know, A or some version of A, so to say, that does not mean that they are in any way related. They might be completely separate. So just keep that in mind. So we know we don't actually no have to notate anything uh, depending on what it is, so to say. Of course, we're going to... Uh, get rid of that notion of what an object is in a second as well but it's important to note this that you know a could be anything x could be anything omega could be anything uh you know gamma could be anything it's just what you say it is you know that's why you actually have to say what it is and not just say oh well you know from the notation um so basically you N notate objects and you define objects by their properties so what can an object do you know what can we do to it that sort of thing uh, you know like a could be an element of the natural numbers um, that is a property now we know something about a that is great and you know we just say a we just use it to give that object an identifier so we can work with it and we can analyze it and these are just properties and when we say you know a is a natural number uh, what we really mean when we say that an object is something is that it, an object has a certain set of properties so really when we say that an object is something when you apply a label to an object you know this object is a vector this object is a set this object is a function what we really do is is, is just basically a shorthand for a long, long list of properties. So when we say that it's a natural number, we're really just, um, you know, applying all of the, we're just saying that this object A has all of the properties of the natural numbers and, you know, probably then some. 
So, you know, this actually probably means that uh, this is actually an implication. We'll talk about that in a little bit. This actually means that a plus one is an element. And this actually ba is based on the theorem of full induction. But, you know, this is such, uh, such a statement that we can derive from this one. And um, so that is basically uh, what we do in mathematics. We just have objects. The objects have some properties and labels are basically just shorthands for long lists of properties. Uh, of course we also need to define some context for this world and for that we have something called axioms. Axioms are statements that we make about the world that we do not prove. So like we say a times b equals b times a. Uh, you might know that you might have heard that this means that the multiplication is commutative. Now we just say that multiplication, yeah, and so is addition, so a plus b equals b plus a. Uh, these are just axioms. We don't prove this. We just say this is how it's gonna be. And of course if we actually have to define, you know, what process would go through when you when we do B plus A, then we would have to prove that it's commutative. But we actually don't. No, it's it's just, you know, an intuition based axiom. So we don't prove those. But we can use the axioms to later prove other statements, you know such that, you know, adding two vectors together is commutative uh, and associative. So that's the kind of stuff that uh, make the basis of an that would give context to uh, any discipline of mathematics that we might be um, doing here to make actual statements about this world in order to be able to, you know, observe it. We need something called logic and this is what we're going to be we're going to be talking about right now so logic uh, and basically we need logical statements so logical statement is either true or false and you know logical statement could be something like 2 plus 2 is 4 you know, this is a logical statement. Or we could say that 2 divides x. So x is a uh, even number. And, you know, we could say that y is greater than 3. These are all logical uh, statements. Uh, you know, we could also say that, you know, some vector, and this is the last time I actually use this notation, some vector... Uh, absolute value is greater than some vector b's absolute value. These are all uh, logical statements, mathematical statements about uh, real numbers. Uh, so you can see how this uh, can be useful to us. So you know we can actually derive properties of objects using these. And these are all either true or false. You know, 2 plus 2 is either equal to 4 or it's not equal to 4. And it cannot be equal and not equal uh, at the same time. You know, 2 either divides or it does not divide. You know, y is either larger or it's not larger. It cannot be, you know, larger and not larger at the same time. You know, same thing here. So these are all statements that are either true or false. Uh, let's Let me write, actually another one just to uh, dispel the idea that this is in any way incorrect it's not incorrect it's a perfectly valid logical statement it's just a logical statement that happens to be false and just really quickly we actually use symbols for true and false so for true we usually use an upwards pointing arrow and this is uh, how we usually uh, say that a statement is true and when we say it's false then surprisingly we notate with a downwards pointing arrow now this is not always the case not all professors use this notation they usually just say true or false or may, they might even say true or false in your language if it's not English um, so 
That is basically how we used to describe a logical statement. Now, of course, what I told you earlier is that uh, we have to define all objects uh, in mathematics in a way that excludes any misunderstanding. So we should define logical statements because they are objects. We can, in fact, analyze logical statements just like any other object in mathematics. So we're going to say that some object A is a logical statement if, and I'm going to say if A is an element of the set of true and false. This covers everything, every statement that we said about a logical statement. You know, it cannot be both of these at the same time. Because we, we, we also might uh, want to say that A is not equal to, or, or uh, true is not equal to false. So, and this is actually not a very good notation, but this would be one way to define a logical statement. If it's an element of this or any isomorphic algebra that is isomorphic to this, uh, we're not going to go into what that is, but I'm just going to put that there instead in case somebody tries to, you know, be mean about it. So this would be a pretty good uh, definition of a logical statement. Uh, now, of course, there's al also something called fuzzy logic or fuzzy st set theory, and we're going to talk about that later. But we're basically uh, something is like 50% true or 75% true or one percent true or point three percent true and that yes that exists but we're not going to talk about that right now so what we're going to talk about right now is logical operators and actually it's uh really awkward because it doesn't really matter once we get into actual operators and relations. It don't re doesn't really matter if we use these as operators or relations because they would essentially, just in the case of logical statements, would be the same. Uh, so the first logical operator that we're going to look at is the conjunction operator, so an AND, which we denote as a symbol as such. So this is called a conjunction excuse my ugly handwriting and basically what this means is actually really easy if it basically means that A and B so this uh, obviously means that if A and B are both true then this whole thing is also true. Only and only if both of these are true. Um, so if A is false, then this is not true, and if B is... And I'm going to draw a little so-called truth table over here. And I'm going to put the little and symbol over here. And I'm going to put here true and false. So T and F for true and false. We're not going to use the arrows right now just to look at all, 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 at all the ways that we can actually denote these two values, which is basically infinite, like any two different symbols would do. So um, if both statements are true, then this is also true. If both statements are false, then this is also false. If this one's true and this one's false, then the, then you know A and B are also false. If this one's false, this one's true, it's still false. So I'm not sure if this is uh, very understandable. Uh, I'm going to actually draw another table that might better describe it. So in the top row here, we're going to have our logical statements. So we're going to have a logical statement A and our logical statement B. And here we're going to have the logical statement A and B. And I actually drew this a little bit wide.
And we're just going to draw all the combinations. So, yeah, so if A is true and B is false, then A and B is false. If A is false and B is true, then A and B is still false. If A is true and B is true, then A and B is true as well. And if A is false and B is false, then A and B is also false. So this is what the logical operator conjunction is does. It is it returns, so to say, true if both A and B are true. That's when this statement is true. Okay. Our next operation is or, which is denoted with a V. And this is called disjunction. So disjunction, I have to put an accent there. So disjunction. And again, this is related to our human language, which basically means A or B is true if either A or B, or at least A or B, are true. So, again, I'm going to draw a little truth table over here. Is there a logical statement A? and our logical statement B. And here's our logical statement A or B. And we're going to draw three lines in here. Okay, so if A is true and B is true, then A or B is true, right? Because at least one of them is true. If A is false and B is true, then it's still true because B is true. If A is true and B is false, then A or B is still true, again, because at least one of them is true. If A is false and B is false, then A or B, this statement A or B, is false, because neither of them is true. And that is what disjunction is. It's basically A or B, so at least one of them is true. And another beautiful thing, by the way, about this is that we just described with this table and this table, we just described the entire functionality of these two operations. And we have the luxury of doing that because, well, the R set of logical values is actually limited. Now we, this is the point where we probably get out of familiar territory. Our next um, operation is this one, implication. Which is basically, uh, in normal language, just you would read this as if A, then B. So A implies B. Or A being true implies that B is true. Um, and this is actually really hard to wrap your head around at first because uh, this is not a cause and effect. This does not describe a cause and effect relations. Again, you know, we world of mathematics, cause and effect does not exist as a concept because we did not define it. So, so cause and effect, what I mean is cause and effect only actually exists in the real world, not in the world of mathematics. So this is not cause and effect. So if I say that if, um, let's say, 5 is greater than 3, then uh, 6 is greater than 5. This is true. This is absolutely true. So you can put complete two completely unrelated statements here, and, and this would still hold. If 5 is greater than 3, then 6 is greater than 5. Or, you know, something else, like if it's raining, 
and let's just pretend for a second that this is a correct mathematical statement, then it's Tuesday. If it's raining and it's Tuesday, then it's also true that if it's raining, then it's Tuesday. And, you know, just pretending that these two are mathematical statements for some reason. Um, and this works because it's not cause and effect. It's not, it does, uh, does not mean causation. It means logical implication. Uh, and I c completely forgot to tell you what this means. This basically means that if A is true, the and B is true, then this whole thing is true. If A is true and B is false, this is false. And if A is false, then B can be anything. It's still going to be true. So I'm going to quickly write the uh, truth table for this. Uh, and I'm going to say, so true, false, false, true, uh, true, true, false, false. So if A is true and B is false, then A implying B is false. If A is false and B is true, then because A is false, A implying B is true. And if A is true and B is true, then A implying B is still true. And of course, if A is false and B is false, then A implying B is still true because A is false. So that's what it means. If it's not raining and it's Tuesday, and it still means that if it's raining, it's Tuesday. And of course, this is very hard to wrap your, f you know, your head around. So, okay, so how does one imply the other if there isn't actual any actual connection in there? And uh, actually, what I say to that is, well, actually, if you look at it in other in another way, in a way that we're gonna see in a little bit, uh, which is to say that this is always true, then we actually can say that that if this is true, then this is true. So, for example, uh, and this is running ahead of ourselves a little bit, but if 2 divides x, that implies that there exists so an n such that x equals 2n. And this is running ahead of ourselves a little bit, but here in this case, if we take an x that is divisible by 2, then it's also true that there exists an n, which is exactly half of that x. Uh, and th these are actually equivalent, so, but it, it's also implication. So this is actually really hard to wrap your hair around. Um, I'm gonna let you do that in your own time. Um, but yeah, this is, this is something that took me a long time, but uh, trust me, it makes perfect sense. Okay, our next logical operation is called equivalence. So basically this means that A and B, but again, this is where our language fails because it's not the same as our and operations, so we're just going to write equivalence or equivalency. Yeah. I'm going to write equivalency. I'm not sure if I'm spelling that correctly, but equivalency is this symbol. You might have seen it uh, over here. Oh no, this is actually implication, but um, this is basically you can uh, remember it as the logical statements equivalent of equality. Uh, and yes, this basically means that A is equivalent to B if they both have the same logical value. So if A and B are both true, then A is equivalent to B. And if A and B are both false, then this is equivalent. So uh, this is one uh, thing that is actually a lot easier after implication. But actually, the thing is... If this is true, then A also implies B, and B also implies A, if this is true. You can easily see that by looking at um, implication. You know, if both are true or both are false, then this is also true. So, 
equivalency. Let's let me write the truth table for this real quick. So true, true, false, false, true, false, false, true. And A is equivalent to B. Uh, if both are true, then of course A is equivalent to B. If both are false, then again A is equivalent to B. If A and B are different, so if A is true and B is false, then of course they are not equivalent. And if A is false and B is true, then again they are not equivalent. Uh, so this is what equivalency is. Uh, this is actually really easy to uh, think about as just the uh, equality of logical statements. And again, uh, this means that both these statements are true. Uh, even though we say that both these statements are equivalent, that doesn't mean that they're equivalent in our sense of uh, of our natural language and again this is something that it differs from our natural language this, is, this does not mean that these two are equivalent for example if these are predicates which means that they have different uh, truth values depending on uh, some other variable then sometimes they're equivalent and sometimes they're not but that does not mean that they're if they're always equivalent then you can say that by natural definition they are also equivalent but um, Okay, so by mathematical defini definition, two statements are equivalent if they are both true or both false. That w that is what you should learn. Uh, don't mind me rambling about random stuff. Okay, next operation we're going to learn is called not. And we're going to notate it like this. And this is an operation called negation. So negation is... Basically, uh, this is actually a unary operation, not a binary operation. A binary operation is when it has two operands, so we have A and B. And here we only have one operand, so not A. This means that, this basically means, yeah, not A. So if A is not true. So this is true if A is false. And this is false if A is true. So this, you can basically think of this as a little flip switch uh, that can be used to flip the logical value of that statement around. Uh, this is usually not a good uh, thing to do to use this operation. Uh, of course, I'm going to use it here regardless. I'm going to write a slightly smaller truth table for this because it's just so simple. So. If A is true, then not A is false. And if A is false, then not A is true. And that's what negation is all about. Now we get to some more exotic operations. One of these is called XOR. So these are, by the way, gate names. So all of these are names of... Uh, Electrical logical gates in case you're studying engineering uh, electronic engineering. This would be good for you to say uh, to uh, Memorize these as well. So XOR gate or exclusive you notate it like this and It's called an exclusive Disjunction In mathematics so What an exclusive disjunction is is an exclusive disjunction is true if exactly one uh, statement is true. So basically, you can think of this as a sort of flip switch. You know, you either redirect the true to that one or the other one. So A exclusively disjuncted would be uh, that means that either this is true or this is true. They cannot both be true, and they cannot both be false. So uh, here's the truth table for that. I 
I can't draw straight for the life of me. Holy Jesus, that is bad. Okay, so... Two, four. Okay, so if A is true and B is f false, not B, I mean, I guess that would be true. But if B is false, then A or B, I'm just going to say A or B, is true. If A is false and B is true, then A or B is still true. If A is true and B is true, then this A or B, this exclusive OR, is false. And if A is false and B is false, then the exclusive OR is still false. And the last uh, such um, exotic operation is the NAND um, gate, or not AND. Uh, and the notation of this is actually weird because uh, you can notate it as two vertical lines. Those are not vertical at all. But you can notate it as two vertical lines, but you might confuse that with, you know, the OR uh, of C++. Or you can notate it as an upward pointing arrow, which then you can com confuse with the truth. I'm going to use this one because we're not writing code in C++, so that's going to be good. I'm even going to delete that. But, uh, you know, that's not incorrect. It's just, uh, for the most part, it's not practical. So this is actually uh, has really fancy name. This is called the Sheffer's Stroke. So the Sheffer's Stroke. Uh, named after, I believe, Henri Sheffer. Uh, I'm not sure if he's actually French, and I just butchered, butchered his name. Uh, but, yeah, that's the guy who actually, that this was named after, and Gimp is completely freaking out on me. And, as you can see from the name, this uh, is true if the and of them is false. So, what this means is that you have A, not and B. And let, let me just write the truth table here real quick. And this time I'm going to take extra care. Well, so much for that. Uh, to make this nice and fancy. So, we have A, B, and A, not and B. Or A, Sheffer stroke B. So, if A is true and B is false, and of course, A and B would be false. So, A not and B is true. And actually, uh, the easy way to describe this is that if at least one of the operands is false, then this is uh, true. So, if A is false and B is true, then A Sheffer's true B is true. If A is false and B is false, then A Sheffer's true B is true. And if A is false, A is true, and B is true, then A Sheffer stroke B is false. Uh, so yeah, basically, the quick way to think about it is that at least one of these operands is false. And if that's true, then the whole thing's going to be true. And of course, please don't confuse me saying if that's true and you know actual true and false now is here. You know, these are just names. Uh, this, this is what I was talking about when you should separate, you know, terms of real, of, of inside the math world and outside of it. So, so yeah, uh, this is basically uh, the negation of the conjunction. So again, I'm gonna write not a and b is equivalent to a Sheffer stroke b. Now we're not we're actually not going to use these last two very often. Uh, most of the time when we're doing uh, mathematical arguments, we're just going to use and or implication and equivalency. These are the ones that we're actually going to use most of the time. Uh, the other ones are just there to be fancy, and you know, it it cannot hurt to to uh, learn those as well in case you come across them somewhere. So, um, now you might be saying, okay, so I know how to make 
uh, logical statements, and I know how to do all sorts of fancy formulas with them, but uh, how do I actually use this to apply to actual real-world objects? And now that's when we're going to learn something called predicates. Predicates are basically logical statements uh, that change, uh, their, that are either true or false based on some other variable. So predicate will be denoted like this. And uh, for example, an example for the predicate would be, uh, so this is true if the following is true. Uh, x is greater than 2 and x uh, let's say is less than or equal to 18 so this basically means that px is equivalent to x is a number between 2 uh, but at most it's 18 so n a number that is greater than 2 and it's 18 at most uh, so this is what a predicate is. You might notice that this looks suspiciously like a function. Uh, so basically, you know, you have your equality. I've already talked about this being sort of a, a logical equivalent to equality. And, you know, we have your operations here. You know, these are basically just statements as we, talk, as we talked about. And these are basically statements. You have an operation and, you know, some number and then x in parentheses equals is really would remind you of something like you know f x equals x plus five something like that and yeah that is true predicates are actually functions and they map some object to some truth value so they actually map from some set to the set of uh true and false um so this is what a predicate is and this is how you can say this is one of the ways that you can say you know, um, oh, this is true to this. And of course, you can you could just say this um, and be done with it. But, you know, this is a way to sort of uh, give them a shorthand. So this is how you would make a statement about an x. So if we, if we know that x is uh, equal to uh, 4, then we would know that px is true. So... Uh, something like that. So basically, we just made a statement about this object, and you know, we made a statement about one of its properties. It has infinite numbers of properties, but uh, we just made a statement about one of them. So that's fine. So I can make a statement about any object like this, and so what if I want to make a statement about more than one object? You know, would I wouldn't you know like like to write that you know. 1 is, or 3 is greater than 2 and less than 18, or all of those. So how would I write uh, something like all objects with a certain uh, with a certain property also have this other property? So how would I make a statement about all objects? And for that, we use something called quantifiers. I completely given up on writing non-cursive. I, I can only write cursive. I'm sorry. So we have something called quantifiers. And the first quantifier that we're going to learn is this. This is called the universal quantifier. So basically, uh, what this says is that all, so this is basically just an inverted A for all, uh, all objects such that this and this and this so this actually is read as for all so for example for all x that is an element of natural numbers x is divisible in case you don't know this is the uh, x is divisible by y or something so x uh, sorry x is div no sorry I messed up. X divides um, 6. So, what we said here is that for all X's in natural numbers, X divides 6. Um, 
So, um, obviously you could see that this is not true. You know, not all natural numbers divide 6. There's a very limited number of natural numbers that divide 6. So this statement right here, this is actually, this is still a logical statement. Um, this statement would be false. So how would you actually flip this around and say that it's true? Of course, you could just... Uh, you know, say that, you know, this is, you know, just negate it and then it's true. You know, then it's true, but that's a really lazy way to go about it. And, and really, on outside the world of mathematics, we're just looking at this and we're not really getting any information out of it. You know, just saying, no, this is not true. But, you know, what does that mean that this is not true? So how would you do it without negating, which is, this is what I'm talking about. This is a really cheap way to do things. So how would you do it otherwise? Um, and this is where you would use this. This is called an existential quantifier. So an existential quantifier means that there exists so there exists let's actually read this as there exists or there is so there is an x that is an element of natural numbers such that x does not so this is just me crossing it out to say it's not does not divide 6 and this statement would be true and also equivalent to the last one in every for every x. Um, so uh, what does this mean? This means that if I take some x, that I can take an x, an element from the natural numbers. Let's call it x, and then I can say that x does not divide six. There exists an element with this property. Meanwhile, this one said that any no elements in natural numbers have this property, which is not true because not any or not all have, you know, just some. And how would you say that? You would say that, yeah, there exist. And, of course, this is true. And, of course, this would be true even if here it, if I didn't have the does not divide and instead I had divide, it would still be true. Because all this says is that there exists at least one like this. Of course, there's a special version of the existential quantifier which says, which goes something like this, or maybe the exclamation go part goes here, which, which says that there exists exactly one like this. But uh, we're not going to talk about that. So basically, this says there exists an x in natural numbers such that this. And for the final part of this uh, little presentation, I'm actually going to show you how you would use this in action. I'm going to use this to define prime numbers. So, to define a prime number, I'm going to say that if or, or I'm going to actually uh, write it in English. There's nothing wrong with writing it in English. Again, it's, it's as long as there is absolutely zero chance of misunderstanding. So I'm going to say that... Uh, okay, I messed that up. That a P um, natural number, so P element of natural numbers, I don't, know, I don't know why I wrote an. A P natural number is called a prime if and only if. I, I would write if and only if. And actually, I'm going to write the equivalency. And this is a declaration. So, uh, 
I mean, we're not going to prove this. This is what we're actually going to call a, what a, a prime number is. So I'm just continuing it here as if I were writing an equ equality sign. If and only if, uh, for all A and B in the natural numbers, if P divides A times B, then P divides A or P divides B. And this is a definition of prime numbers. So basically if P divides the multiple of two natural numbers, then P has to divide at least one of those natural numbers. And that's what a uh, prime number is. That's what a definition of It's not that, you know, a prime number only has, you know, two real, two divisors and no real divisors. That is not what a prime number actually is defined as. This is what a prime number really is defined as. So see if you can really understand this. Uh, and if you can, then you're on the right track of understanding logical formulas and all that. And of course, I'm going to write something even more complicated, and you are by no means uh, required to understand this. This is just me showing off and just basically showing you, you know, just how uh, much of a deep part uh, this is of mathematics, and you basically can't do anything without it. So. Um, we say that a limit of some series A, so A is a subset of natural X, some set B equals L if and only if, uh, for all epsilon, that is the element of the positive reals, there exists a big N or capital N natural number such that, and I'm going to continue over here, for all uh, non-capital N in natural numbers that is greater than capital N, the following is true. The absolute value are uh, actually, yeah, the absolute value of a n, or no, not a n, but the absolute value of L minus a n is smaller than that epsilon. You're by no means meant to understand this. It's just to show you how you actually use it in a real live way. And this is another definition, by the way. So this is, again, not something that you prove. Uh, but, so yeah, basically, the difference from the limits is always smaller than that epsilon. So, yeah. Uh, so these are the way you can actually write these fancy things. Um, this is it for logic. Uh and I hope this has helped somewhat. Uh, next time we're going to take a look at uh, relations and all that good stuff. It's just hopefully going to then, uh, we'll, we'll be immediately using these kinds of logical statements there. So until then, see ya.